Hola, mi amigos. It's getting close now, only a couple of weeks until I leave, and only a couple more episodes left. This time I'm going to talk a little bit about Costa Rican's economy. Costa Rica depends heavily on tourism, agriculture, and electronics exports. Poverty has been reduced over the past 15 years, though they still have about 16% living below the poverty line and about 7.8% unemployment in 2009. Key challenges for the government include curbing inflation, reducing the deficit, and improving the public sector efficiency through an anti-corruption drive. Controlling the budget deficits is a big challenge for the economic policymakers, as it consumes about 30% of the government's total revenues, which limits the resources available for other investments. This seems to be a problem with many countries in the world, and Costa Rica uses several different avenues to promote income growth. They use their natural resources as an attraction for retirees and ecotourists, and this results in having one of the best economies in Latin America. Its location also helps provide easy access to North and South American markets, direct ocean access to the European and Asian continents. Because of the ocean access, 23.7% of Costa Ricans fish and trade their catches to fish companies. According to the 2012 Environmental Performance Index ranking, Costa Rica is fifth in the world and the first among the Americas. Tourism is a large part of the economy. Costa Rica stands as the most visited nation in the Central American region, with 2.42 million tourists in 2013. Ecotourism, as mentioned before, is extremely popular, with almost one-fourth of the country devoted to national parks with adjoining beaches. They promote adventures and sun and beaches and pull a lot of their tourists from the U.S. and Canada and then some from Europe. Its main weakness, according to the 2008 Travel and Tourism Competitive Index, is ground transport infrastructure and safety and security. Historically, Costa Rican economy was based on agriculture, and their cash crops included coffee and bananas. Coffee especially has much cultural and political importance and brought a new wealth to the country's elite in the 1800s. Depending on the location and the altitude, many regions differ in agricultural crops and techniques. The main exports that are not bananas and coffee are pineapples, sugar, rice, vegetables, tropical fruit, ornamental plants, corn, and potatoes. They also have exports in livestock, meat and dairy produce, forest products, and textiles. In recent times, electronics, pharmaceuticals, financial outsourcing, software development, and ecotourism have become prime industries in Costa Rican economy. High level of education among its residents makes the country an attractive investing location. Its mountainous terrain and abundant rainfall have permitted the construction of a dozen hydroelectric power plants, making it self-sufficient in all energy needs except oil for transportation. Costa Rica exports electricity to Central America and has the potential to become a major electricity exporter. Also, the mild climate and trade winds make heating and air conditioning unnecessary. Costa Rica's infrastructure has suffered from a lack of maintenance and new investment. Much of the country's extensive road system is unfortunately in disrepair. Even until recently, their railroad didn't operate for several years and the Costa Rican's ports are struggling to keep pace with growing trade. The government hopes to bring in foreign investments, technology and management into several sectors. However, opposing to making these sectors private participation has stalled efforts. Costa Rica retains a reputation as one of the most stable, prosperous, and among the least corrupted in Latin America. Even though some individuals have been suspected of corruption, the country's reputation on whole remains intact. The more I research Costa Rica, the more I would love to stay there after my trip ends. Still, only three weeks left until I leave and tons to do. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below in the comments section, and I'll see you next week when I talk about the kinds of wildlife I'll encounter on my trip.